and Bonkum, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's check out the top new games made with Unity launched in March 24. This was an interesting month, there were maybe 30 or 40 games that I found really interesting, but actually a surprisingly amount of them had some issues and had some mixed reviews. Although even without those, it was still really tricky to pick just 10 for this list, there were plenty that looked very interesting and were well made. The reason why I make these videos is to show you everything that the engine can do, the only limit is really just your own skills and imagination, and the variety and the awesomeness of the games shown here really puts that to the test. All of these games are uniquely impressive, so the list is in no particular order, except for the number one game, that is my personal pick of the month. Quick mention, I just released the free intermediate section for my C-Sharp course, so now both the beginner and intermediate sections are free over here on YouTube. The advanced section will be coming out in about 1-2 to two months. I hope you'll learn a lot from these free videos, or get the premium version, which includes a bunch of awesome bonuses like interactive exercises to help you learn by doing. And if you need any assets, then check out the spring sale on the asset store. Whether you need visuals, sounds, effects, tools, you can find pretty much anything to help you make your own games. I covered some of my favorites that I think can really help you in the last video. And check out the Flash Deals page, which shows what assets are going to be 70% off in the future. Check it out to the links in the description. Alright, so starting off at number 10 with a very silly, very frustrating game titled A Difficult Game About Climbing. You've probably already heard about this one. It's been a huge hit with all kinds of streamers, and it's made by YouTuber Pontypants, who also made Punch a Bunch. This is a game very much like Getting Over It and other rage games like that one. Controls are very tight, but the map is extremely difficult. If you fail, you drop down to almost the beginning with only a handful of checkpoints along the way. You control the hands of the character, just move and grab by the left hand or the right hand, and then it's all about using momentum to fling yourself from position to position as you try to climb higher and higher. There's lots of hazards like slippery walls and falling water that will push you down, as well as some areas that really just require a leap of faith. Now personally I'm not really a fan of this genre, I don't enjoy feeling frustrating, but if you are into these types of games then this is an extremely well made one. Like I said this one is already a huge hit, it's got over 2000 very positive reviews, which means it has sold almost 100,000 copies which is an insane amount. If that game is too frustrating and instead you want something super chill, here is Summer House. It's a relaxing house building game, there are no rules, no game over screens, you just load up a very calming scene, like for example in front of a lake, and then start building your dream home brick by brick. You place the walls, place the windows, then put down some stairs, unlock hidden characters and really just enjoy yourself. There's no win or lose condition, this is really just a game meant for relaxing. If you're into games like Townscaper or Dorf Romantic then you'll probably love this one. It seems a lot of people are looking for a relaxing game to play. This one already has over a thousand overwhelmingly positive reviews at 96% positive. That's really awesome, super high. Next up here we have a game all about chaos called Maniac. It looks like a really nice mix between the GTA 1 meter coupled with the game Postal. In theory it's a simple game with some shooting, driving and some roguelite upgrades, but in reality it's extremely well made. The game looks really great in motion, both in terms of visuals with some really gorgeous natural lighting, but also in terms of physics and effects with lots of objects and plenty of particles flying all over the place. I wonder if this game is made using dots, the amount of objects on screen is really quite impressive. You've got got lots of weapons, lots of vehicles, there are 6 unique characters with skills, a large open world and even has a map editor. You've got all of that and the goal is to cause chaos and follow along as the wanted meter climbs with tons of levels. This game is a great example of how even with a simple concept you can technically find success, although of course that only happens if your execution is absolutely flawless, which is definitely not easy to achieve. This game is indeed finding quite a lot of success, it already has over 500 very positive reviews, so probably over 20,000 copies sold in just 3 days. Next up for a city builder exploration game, here is Bulwark Falconeer Chronicles. It's a very unique builder game. The world is very much non-standard with lots of mountains and you build tons of bridges to connect all kinds of buildings. The footage of all the cities is really unlike any other game, it's all very vertical with lots of interesting connections. You build some ships and some airships, then you take them out and explore this dangerous world with plenty of foes and mysteries to uncover. This game is actually related to the previous one that this dev made, the Falconeer. That was a game where you control a falcon and explore an open world while gathering some resources and attacking enemies, so something like a plane flying game, whereas this one is set in the same world but completely different in terms of gameplay. Honestly, I love this sort of thing and I really wish more indies would do this. Basically make multiple games with different mechanics, different genres, but share the same world. It's really hard to do it right, which is why most don't even attempt it, but when it works, like in this case, I think it makes the game a little bit more interesting. This one is being very well received, already over 300 reviews at very positive, so that's about 12,000 copies sold in one week, really nice. Then if you're looking for an adventure deep underground, check out Subterrain Mines of Titan. It's a turn-based survival RPG. You 
explore this large world and survive against all kinds of enemies. Make sure to pick the right stats and the right equipment or risk dying. Every action you do, every single movement, all of that moves the time forward, so you have to be careful with every single action you take. Time is really of the essence. Food, water, and oxygen are scarce. Other surviving colonists also need help with their tasks, so you need to salvage whatever materials you can find, break them down into raw resources, and use those resources to build up weapons and armor in order to survive your next excursion. Visually, it looks gorgeous with some really high quality pixel art, some great lighting and effects. It is out now with 350 mostly positive reviews, with some people disliking the turn-based style, but if you're into that, then definitely check this one out. Next up, if you'd like to make your own spells, then check out Spell Disc. This is a roguelite action game, lots of enemies to defeat, kind of like Vampire Survivors. The one unique twist on this one is how you have a lot of control over your attacks. You actually build and customize your attacks by connecting different elements and individual attacks together. For example, you can fire a chain, which in turn triggers an electricity spell, which in turn triggers a fire spell, which in turn fires a fireball, which in turn triggers an ice AoE and then throws a normal dagger. There's various base classes and lots of items and spells that you can combine in ways that no one has ever seen that spell before, not even the developer. So the potential here for experimentation is really quite insane. You can easily save and load your unique build so you can keep experimenting or just go back to something that works. You craft a build, unlock new items, make another better build, go out again and do it all over again. This one just left early access with a full 1.0 release. It's got 600 very positive reviews. Next, if you'd like to play a factory colony building game, but with a chill vibe, here is Stellar Settlers Space Base Builder. It's your job to settle on five hostile alien planets and build a thriving colony. You can build both horizontally and vertically, gather resources, connect your buildings, and process some materials, then pick from various settlers with different sets and set them to work on some pod. The reviews mention how it's a little bit more heavy on the puzzle side than on colony building, so you have to be careful about where you place each settler. Each planet is unique with different disasters and biomes, and after you have enough resources to build up your rocket ship, after that you can build them, but you have to make sure that you do it carefully, because the spaceship, that one is physics based, so you definitely need to make sure to build it properly if you want to actually get up to space. It is out now in early access, and they have a pretty robust roadmap with a 1.0 release planned in mid to late 25. Then here we have Godsworn. This is very much a classic RTS in the vein of something like Warcraft. You have lots of units and buildings you can control alongside a mythical hero. This definitely perfectly encapsulates the feeling of those old school RTS. For me, I was more of a fan of games like Command and Conquer rather than games with some heroes, but this one does look great. It has a story campaign that you can play in either single player or co-op. It's got a nice engaging story all about mythical gods and how their tribes fight one another. You construct some buildings, gather your units, and prepare for battle. It is out now in early access and People are loving it with 200 reviews at 94% positive, so if you're into classic RTS style with some heroes, definitely check that out. Up next, here's an interesting one titled The Brew Barons. This one is a flying and beer crafting management game. A very unique, very strange mix. There are apparently some pirates in this world, and those pirates have boats and planes, and they want to control the supply of beer, so your job is to essentially take them out. You do some combat to take out all the pirates' planes then craft some beer and distribute it. You can customize a ton of parts in your plane, each part giving you different bonuses, like for example letting you harvest more of a certain resource or spend less gas. For gathering the ingredients, you really just fly around and shoot some trees, then you buy some ingredients, throw them in the pot, let them ferment, and out comes some beer which you can then customize how you want to bottle it. This game is a very strange, very unique idea. Personally, I quite like it, I think it looks great. It is out now with 400 mostly positive reviews. The one negative that reviews mention is just how the plane feels too heavy, which maybe is intentional since these are really not fighter planes. And then at number one for my personal pick of the month, if you're into some turn-based strategy set in World War II, then here is Classified France 44. This is a mix of Commandos, which was a game that I loved playing as a kid, mixed with XCOM, which is another game that I love. And I also really love games about guerrilla warfare, that is why I prefer XCOM 2 to XCOM 1. In this one, you control some elite units as you sneak behind enemy lines, and it's up to you to engage in a campaign of sabotage and destruction. But at the same time, the more chaos you create, the more attention you attract. This is an XCOM like, so you've got a grid based, turn based strategy. You can recruit elite operatives to build up your squad, make sure to make every shot count, take cover, and flank your enemies. The game also has many features that build upon this genre. For example, you have more action points to take more complex actions, you have more options for how your Overwatch activates, and more complex levels with verticality with many flanking positions. The time is constantly counting down towards D Day. It's up to you to choose your missions wisely and help the allies win the war. It's been quite some time since I played the 
turn-based strategy game, so I very much want to find the time to give this one a try. It is out now with 200 very positive views. Alright, so that's 10 awesome new games made with Unity and launched in March 24. I hope this list helped you see how the Unity engine is capable of building anything. The only limits are really just your own skills and imagination. And don't forget to check out the Spring Sale. If you need anything, then now's the best time to get it.